Hey, I'm Mark. Kilo Delta 7, Delta Tango Sierra from Soda Plus, and today I am excited to be with Dr. Doug K6JEY. Yeah, great. Doug, I have been having a Baofeng problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a I'm lot not of people <laughs> A lot of people have had Baofeng problems. Mm -hmm. In particular, I'm curious if this radio is clean or dirty. Okay. Does and that involve anesthetics or antibiotics? <laughs> Hopefully neither, but it does involve careful calibration, and okay. I heard you are the expert. We can do that. I, I, can, I can get you well within one dB uh, of everything we're going to measure. Uh, I have a nice attenuator. It's been calibrated, and I have some metrology-grade type N attenuators. We'll um, put those in line and then put it on the power meter and the spectrum analyzer, make sure all our measurements between 100 megahertz and 1,000 megahertz are accounted for, so we know when we plug the Baofeng in, the harmonics are all calibrated, and uh, that's pretty. It sounds pretty simple, but it, it's going to take some careful measurement and and knowing what the accuracies you've got available are. The analyzer is good to a half a dB. These are good to a couple of tenths of a dB. So we should get some good results, I think. So how do you know so much about calibration? Oh, well, because I, I'm. It's my hobby. I've been kind of doing it since the seventies. And if I remember from my AWRL handbook, you're the author on the chapter on how to do these measurements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm probably the only guy with a calorimetric power meter, two of them actually. Uh, I can do uh, thermally based uh, power measurements from DC to two and a half gigahertz up to 200 watts, which is a pretty large range oh, to a percent or better. So, so you're the guy. Let's get set up for this measurement. Okay. <laughs> The first step in doing this measurement is to make sure that we don't blow up the test equipment with the Baofeng. And that means we need to reduce the power. So, Doug, how are we going to do that? Okay, we've got a couple of attenuators here. Here's a, a brute force 50 watt 30 dB attenuator. So that's going to get it down to about, if it's a one watt output on the handy talkie, maybe about 10 or 20 milliwatts. I think that's still a little hot, so I'm going to put another 20 dB in, in behind that. But we have to know that exactly what the attenuation is in each one of the frequencies, 100 and we'll probably do 400 and 1300 megahertz, and that'll give us some pretty good calibration. Our zero set is with this um, power sensor and my signal generator going into here. We'll, put, we'll zero it out up here, and then we'll put the attenuator in, and we should get a dB difference. Here's a 20 dB attenuator. As they said in Star Wars, many people have died to bring us this information. And this is calibrated at all the way up to uh, 12 gigahertz at quite a nice level. And that was zeroed out, and what was listed as a 20 dB attenuator, we find out in real life is 22.9923 dB. Oh, uh, despite what the attenuator says, uh, you want to do a real life measurement because you never know how far off you can be, and this is actually 21 point, about 21.5 dB loss instead of 20 dB. So. We don't want to be led astray. The unprinted on it is 19.9 dB. So here's 0 0.2 dB is, is the connector to connector loss. And now we're going to stick the Yanritsu in here. And that's at 100 megahertz? Yeah, 100 megahertz. We're going to do it at 400 and 1300. That shows 24.9. And this is a 30 dB attenuator that I measured at 29.94, so so the Enrico is 24.9 and uh, the HP is 21.5, so that's 45.46 dB or so. So that's, that's going to be a good amount of attenuation to get it down in a range so we couldn't possibly hurt the spectrum analyzer. Because if you hurt one of those, it's extremely expensive to get it fixed. It's not something I can do. Well, we hooked up the attenuator at 400 megahertz, and it's the same 20 dB attenuator. And instead of being 21.5 dB, it's 20.8. So apparently, down on the DC end, it's a little different. So I, it just begs the question, in doing this kind of stuff, you never assume what the label says on it. This is a 50 dB attenuator. Yeah, if, you're, if your spec is 10% or so, but then the 10% multiplies with all the rest of the stuff. And pretty soon you've got a reading that's 20 or 30% off, and you essentially have no idea what's going on. Let's just try the other attenuator. Uh, one of our, our local guys, Chip Angle, who, who has all the world records in microwave, up to 10 gigahertz, 
Um, he had one motto. He said, measure everything. Always measure everything. The connectors, the elbows, the extenders, the patch cords, the whole business. Otherwise, you have no idea what you're doing. Okay, this is a lot better reading. This is 31.3 dB. And uh, that's a lot closer to the 30 dB that I know this thing has. And that's a, a base, based on frequency. It apparently doesn't like, for some reason, the lower end. Now, one of the things you have to do in power measurement is, is the distance of the line between the generator and the measuring thing. Uh, if it gets to part of quarter wavelength or eighth wavelength of the frequency you're at, it'll throw everything off and your power meter measurements will be worthless. And you get into microwaves, the connections between the amplifier and the exciter, that can, that can uh, tune your amplifier and cause um, a very inter it could be a Halloween. <laughs> so we're back on the bench again. Uh, we've got the uh, HP attenuator and I measured it at 21.43, uh, it's varying. The attenuators are, are very susceptible to heat. And so, so you don't want to heat them up for any reason. And I don't think uh, zero dBm would heat this very much, but it's changing value slightly. And you have to pay attention to, to normal temperatures, your ambient temperature, and how much heating you're doing in the handy talkies should change it slightly, except the first attenuator is one of these with a big heat sink. So then the, it's meant for 50 watts. So at one watt, it shouldn't heat anything or change anything up. Now here's something I did that maybe most labs don't. So you pick up your camera and point up here to the to fluke. That's an RTL, RTD uh, thermometer. And it is in fact 75.81 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface of my bench. And there are a couple of, because the, the sensor is right down here. There are a couple of measurements that require accurate temperature um, uh, measurement, like noise figure. This box here is a noise figure meter. And if that is off by one degree, it goes off by one tenth of a dB in noise figure. And for for microwave and for EME stuff, that makes a huge difference. You've got to you've got to constrain or narrow in those those inaccuracies on temperatures. The big bugaboo on that. Temperature is also a bad factor in resistance. I have a expensive resistance standard here. It just has one little resistor in it, and at 23 degrees centigrade, it's perfect. But every time you move a half a degree off. The, the reading changes. So if you have a recording a recording multimeter, you can see the temperature in the garage changes as the day progresses and measure it quite accurately, really. So you end up with an expensive thermometer instead of a good resistance meter. Okay, we didn't do Anritsu. Let's do that guy. These are precision end connectors, and if you don't butt them together exactly right, they don't like it. Um, so if you see me screwing aimlessly onto these things, there we go. And you've got to make sure the yeah, SMAs are in. And I think we're still zeroed up. Yeah, it, on, on the label I have it from a couple of years ago, it says a 29.94. So that's, that's, that's pretty close. So we just noticed something really nifty. Everything is temperature sensitive, including the power meter. So check this out. If you have a stable reading, but then you touch the meter, you can cause the reading to shift. Because the sensor is a, ther is a thermopile, is a thermocouple. The RF power heats up the, the two pieces of metal and it generates a little DC voltage. Well, if you heat it up with your hand, it heats it up even more. So, so you gotta really have a te stable temperature environment. I think the message is precision measurement is hard. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Uh, for real, for real measurements, you can you can spend an hour trying to null out all the stuff that makes. Well, and and HP and Android they have websites with uncertainty uh, uh, calculators, and there are six or seven or eight things uh, that affect it. And the two big things are standing wave ratio and temperature. So at this point, we have calibrated numbers. What are we going to do, Doug? Well, we've got uh, three frequencies: 100, 400, and 1300. And the attenuators at registers at 100 megahertz is 45.9 dB. At 400 megahertz, it's 52.1 dB. And at 1300 megahertz, it's 50.2. So in the higher ends, the, it isn't very far off. But now we know exactly how far off it is. So we get, when we get harmonics off the, the Baofings, we know how far down from the, from the fundamental it should be uh, and what corrections to make. 
So um, it gives us it gives us an accurate number. The the inaccuracies in the spectrum analyzer are half a dB. So so we have a vagueness of about half a dB. Um, and these measurements on the, for the insinuators, mm, I'd throw in half. So maybe one dB. But we're dealing with with differences of forty and fifty and sixty dB. So it isn't a very high percentage of inaccuracy. So what are you setting up now? I'm trying to set up some markers so that we can put them right over the peaks and measure and measure how far it is down from the from zero. So Doug's being very careful. He wants to make sure that the thing that we're measuring is the thing that we think we're measuring. So over here, we have a signal generator, and that's putting out zero dBm at 1300 megahertz. And over here, we are measuring 0 0.97 dBm. So why might those be slightly different? Cable loss. Cable loss. So the equipment is doing exactly what we think it should be doing. The equipment's measuring an accurate value. So now we're ready to get started. Yes. Let's do it. You ready to push the button? I am. I'm pushing it. There it is. What's the 147.37 is what it detects and it's at yeah. minus 12.75 12, minus 12 dBm. Okay. Okay, so Doug's pointing out that you see the primary at minus 12.75, but there's nothing else here at either of the markers. And so at minus 50 dB down, there's no signal on the harmonics. The 48, it's a 48 dB difference between the peak output and, and the, the noise. So to at least 48 dB of certainty, there's no dirty harmonics on this. No dirty harmonics whatsoever. All the way up to 1300 megahertz on, on two meters. Fantastic. That's good news. We got three of these radios. Let's go check the other two. Okay, so we just switched to a second Baofeng, and we are at minus 12.9 dBm, so very consistent with the first one. And do you see any harmonics, Doug? Nothing. Looks clean. Let's do the third one. Okay. Okay. All right, we have the third Baofeng attached. How's this one looking? All right, there's our peak. It's at minus 12.9. Interesting, they're all very consistent, and that minus 12.9 converts to, we just did the math, roughly five watts. So these radios are delivering what they said they were going to deliver, and they're doing it without any visible harmonics. Yeah, we're gonna try a, a reference radio now. We're gonna put an Yesu FT60 on this thing, since that is a very good radio, and just see if it looks the same. Yesu FT60 is on, it's at minus 15.4 dBm. So a little bit less power than we're seeing out of the Baofangs mm -hmm. and still no harmonics. So it actually still looks pretty clean. If anything, there may be a tiny amount of second harmonic. Yeah, 55. Okay, there is actually a tiny little harmonic coming off there. So on the Yesu, you can see that the harmonic is at minus 55 dBm. So interestingly, I'm a bit surprised by that. The Baofangs actually have more power and cleaner harmonics. Yeah, yes. I'm a little bit surprised. Let's test the FT5. Okay. okay, I just connected my Yesu FT5 and we are on two meters. Let's see if there's any harmonics here. Nothing. Interestingly, that's clean. So it looks like the Yesu FT5 is actually cleaner than the FT60. We just did all the two meter uh, tests and now we're switching over to 70 centimeters to see if that is any dirtier or cleaner. So and let's the, let's hit the button. The FT60, by the way, checked out to be clean on 440. Nothing at all on second or third harmonic. On on 440. So how are the Baofangs? Okay. Minus 13.8 dBm on the Baofang on 70 centimeters with no visible harmonics. That looks clean. Yeah, I think if we got down to 60 or 70 dB, you start to see some phase noise or something like that. But as far as communications and the FCC are concerned. These are clean radios. Okay, Baofeng number two. Let's give it a shot. Nice and clean. No harmonics. Third and final Baofeng. Let's hit it. Clean signal and no harmonics. Looks like we're good. Last radio. We're going to try the uh, Yesu FT5D on 70 centimeters. And yep, still clean. Looks good. Let me do it. Peak search. Do it again. I have, to, I have to do this while you're doing that. All right, we're doing a peak search. Here we go. Minus 13.5. Yeah. Looks good. There we go. That's that's um, 
We could have done a few things uh, more accurately. I think the ARRL puts a filter on the fundamental and it looks all the way down at, at, to the bottom, but we can't do that. We don't have the dynamic range to do it. And as we were discussing, we think the, the cheaper uh, spectrum analyzers, like the tiny SA, um, people are overloading the mixer and getting all kinds of trash. And that's very easy to do with, with your radio and with a, um, an inexpensive spectrum analyzer. Well, we have, we have the advantage on all those handy talkies of direct digital synthesis. So there's no multipliers and there's no horrible phase lock loops like you used to get with the old uh, Kenwood, uh, Icom, Yezu uh, handhelds in the 80s and 90s where, where the, they were really pretty bad. Uh, the, these are direct digital and they're clean and it's, it's cheap to do. One chip instead of a whole circuit. So to wrap up, what did we see today? Okay, we use, well, the primary thing we had to do was to get the attenuators to, to attenuate the five watts down to a reasonable level so we wouldn't burn down the spectrum analyzer or, or the power meter. And this together is about 50 dB. We measured that accurately at all the frequencies we were going to use to make sure that didn't, you know, there wasn't some slope. And we did find some differences between frequencies. We also used a HP power meter uh, with a signal generator with zero dBm as our reference. So we got zero dBm into here set it on reference, and when we put the attenuator in it, it would show us how much attenuation there was, so we can get really accurate readings on attenuation, because at that relative measurement stuff this is accurate to a hundredth of a dB, which is really accurate. And we transferred that over to what we're doing with a spectrum analyzer. So the signals were down, we calculated 48.5 dB down, because we, we couldn't feed 5 watts into it. We measured below that. So our dynamic range was a little compressed to about 50 or 60 dB, but that's that's kind of 50 or 60 dB is a long ways down. And we didn't see anything except that one or two instances that we showed. Doing it with air gap is a lot trickier because you can get into mixer overload and you can get other things in there like like somebody's local repeater. <laughs> so so it's better to have it with an attenuator, you know, that those are real numbers and, and um, nothing else is getting in the way of the measurement. Well, I for one am relieved that my new favorite fishing radios are not illegal. So Good. that's that's very <laughs> you know, relieving. You know, this is about accuracy, and the accuracy level was legal, not legal. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, thanks for doing the test with me, Doug. Oh, it's lots of fun. Thanks for coming <laughs> over. And uh, we love all of our radios, and conveniently, we're allowed to use all of them still. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this uh, calibration tutorial from Dr. Doug. Yeah, glad to do it. 73s, and we'll uh, probably see you on a mountain again soon. We're going to get yes. back to soda. Yes, you will. <laughs>